Hello and welcome! My name is Carlos Sarmiento, Senior Software Developer for Legal Pro Systems, makers of Jubilee BK. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to complete the Voluntary Petition Form 101 for a bankruptcy individual case. So let's start off. The first thing we're going to do is open up our existing case. Here we are at the Jubilee dashboard. We're going to select our Angela Snow and William Snow case. So let's open it up. We will be focusing on the General Information section under the petition. So let's go ahead and click that and get started. Before we move forward, let's take a quick look at how we can easily review the progress we're making on this particular form. At the top right, we have a button called View Voluntary Petition. What this does is it generates on the fly a quick preview of what this form will look like. From here, you can easily review any data that you have inputted to be sure that everything is going exactly where you expect it to be. From this quick form view, you have a couple of things you can do. You can easily navigate to different parts of the form by selecting one of them from this dropdown. In addition, you can also print a copy of the form or generate it as a PDF. Right, so let's go ahead and give this a close and pick up where we were at. The general information or the voluntary petition section is broken down into several parts which easily correlate to the different parts you find in the form. The first one is details. Very similar to the screen you saw when you first opened the case, we have a couple of fields here that you can update. Case status, as you can see we have a few different statuses that you can set for this case depending where you are in the process. Then we have projected filing date, we have case name and title. What we do by default is automatically set this case name for you based on the debtor's name. But if there's a different naming convention or title you like to use, simply uncheck auto generate and you can input anything that you like. In addition, we automatically will generate an auto incremented in-house number for this particular case. If there's a different numbering system you use in your firm, you're more than happy to update this whatever is more convenient for you. Then we have chapter. We have a variety of different chapters that you can select. Today we're working with the chapter 13 case. And our type of debtor is joint. As you can see, there's only a couple of options that are available for a chapter 13. If you select a different type of chapter, you'll see that partnership, public corporation, and non-public corporation will become available. The last option on this page is our firm office. Every case is assigned to a different office within your firm for tracking and for later reporting. One of the nice features available in Jubilee is the ability to make a case private. By selecting this checkbox, what you will do is essentially limit who has access to this case based on the staff members and attorneys listed in the associated parties section of this case. The next tab is Jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is your basic state, county, district, division that you can update at any point. The next tab is Debtors. The Debtors tab gives you a quick easy way to review and update any information associated with the debtors on the case. So let's go ahead and select Mr. William Snow. As you see his contact profile has been opened up and now we have access to his address, his phone, and his email list. You can very easily add any other piece of information you like by clicking the add button or selecting an existing item on the list to update or edit it. So here we're going to update his phone number. So let's go ahead and update that. There we go, very nice. And let's go ahead and hit save. We save that phone number and it's automatically been updated in his profile. The next tab within the contacts profile is the details tab. This gives us access to his personal information including date of birth, gender and marital status, questions regarding military service as well. The next is our social security numbers tab. In some situations you'll find that there is more than one social associated with a particular contact or debtor, so we give you a very easy way to add as many as necessary. By clicking the add a taxpayer ID button, you'll be given an option to select the type of ID that you're creating and input the number. Right, so let's move on to the next section, identifications. If for any reason you want to store the ID information for this contact, you can easily do that from this section. We support adding driver's license, state IDs, passports, or any other government issued ID. The next tab is aliases. From here you can easily add an alias for this particular debtor. You can select the type of debt alias it is, and then the information that pertains to it. The next couple of sections, dependents and business relationships, will actually be covered later in the case, so we'll follow up with that in a future session. We do have a marketing tab where you can store some information about how you acquire this particular client. And lastly, we have a note section. Here you can put any relevant piece of information, any note that you like associated with this contact specifically. 
So anytime you look up this contact in your contact list, you'll be able to easily access this list of notes. And the last thing I want to cover on the contact profile is editing the contact's name. At the top left, by clicking on Mr. William Snow's name, I have the ability to update his name and the group that he's associated with. Clicking Save and Close will save those changes and bring us back to the previous screen. So now let's go ahead and close out of this contact profile and go back to the case. So here we are on the Debtors tab. There is a variety of different options that you can select on this particular page. As you see here, we have the option to designate this particular debtor as living in separate households. Also, we can assign the nature of debt for each debtor separately for Mr. William Snow here on the left, for the second debtor, Angela Snow, here on the right-hand side. Now on Form 101, the petition we're working on today, line 16, it specifically asks for the nature of the debt. So you can indicate which one of the debtor's information you would like to be represented on that area of the form. Next here we have information about the venue for each particular debtor. And next we have military service information. This is the same information you find under the details section of the debtor's contact profile. The next tab that we're going to look at is fees. The fee section is broken down into two parts filing fees and fee disclosure. The filing fee section is where you can specify how you want to pay the filing fee. In some cases, you can also generate the application to pay the filing fee installment form 103A. So here we have a couple of options. First is attached. So by selecting that, we're simply going to say that the entire filing fee will be paid at the time the case is being filed. The second option, installments, gives us an installment list that we can indicate how much each payment is being made and on the anticipated date that payment will be made. After the case has been filed, you can always come back to the filing fees section and mark this checkbox, filing fee paid to the court, and also enter the date you've paid. This is a nice, easy, convenient way to track if you have actually paid the filing fee to the court. Next, we have the fee disclosure page. This particular tab will allow you to complete official form 2030, the attorney fee disclosure. We start off with putting in the total amount of fees, then any amounts that you've received. We'll automatically calculate the balance due. Then from here, you have a couple of options. Uh, you have the source of compensation paid by debtor or other, uh, source of compensation to be paid for any remaining balance, and then you have an area where you can list the inclusions and exclusions for that disclosure. As you see, by checking a couple of different boxes, you might get additional options to complete the necessary information. Since a lot of the information on this page is also relevant to Schedule E and the SOFA, we have a nice convenient way to push that information over to those schedules. Alright, let's hit save. So as we see here, the first thing that has come up is the SOFA window for payments related to bankruptcy preparation or debt counseling, which is essentially what the attorney's fees are. By default, we've already pre-populated the attorney information and the payment based on what you've entered in the previous screen. So here you can complete any other information or simply click save and close. The next dialog that has come up is a new priority creditor. So we are pushing the balance that is owed from the debtor to the attorney to Schedule E. As with the SOFA, we've pre-populated a lot of this information for your convenience. As you see, the attorney's name has already been added. We've also selected attorney's fees from the appropriate priority dropdown. And in addition, we've also pre-populated the outstanding amount that is due uh, to the attorney. From here, we're just going to click Save and Close. And here we are, back at the petition area. Right, the next section we're going to cover is the Bankruptcies tab. This tab is broken down into two areas, one for Mr. Snow and one for Mrs. Snow. Under each one, you'll be able to enter any pending or prior bankruptcies. So we can easily do that by clicking the New button and then completing the information. All right, so let's go ahead and put in a prior bankruptcy. For Mr. Snow, let's select the state and the jurisdiction. All right, let's put in a case number. And the date it was filed. So let's jump back a couple of years here. We go. Excellent. And save and close. We'll record that and add it to our list. All right, so moving on to the next section, tenant. If the debtor rents, this is an important section to be sure to complete. By checking on debtor rents, it'll open up a series of additional options. And as you can see, as we check more options, more information becomes available for us to complete. So here we're going to go in and select the landlord has a judgment against the debtor. And there is more fields for us to input. But in this particular case, our debtor does not rent. So let's go ahead and uncheck that and we're going to move forward. Right, we're not going to save that screen today. 
And the next one we come to is hazardous property. By clicking the new button here across the top, we'll be able to enter a new piece of hazardous property that needs attention. You have an area for the address, a description of the hazard, and a little more information as far as why immediate attention is needed, if necessary. In this particular instance, we don't have any hazardous property, so let's go ahead and cancel. And let's move on to the next tab. Here we have credit counseling. Similar to bankruptcies, this particular tab is broken down into two sections, each one for each debtor. And here you can simply select the appropriate option. So in this case, we're gonna select the first option. We're gonna go ahead and input the completion date. Let's say he recently just completed it and hit the save button. And under the second debtor, Miss Angela Snow, you have the same set of options. So let's go ahead and complete that. And they finish that on the same date and hit save. The next tab we're gonna cover is financial management. This relates to the financial management course that needs to be taken after the bankruptcy has been filed. So at a later time, you'll come back and complete this information as well. And as you can see, as we select different options, additional data is available for us to complete. But since we're not there yet, we're going to select not completed. And the last tab we're going to cover under the general information is settings. When we generate the petition, by default, Jubilee will add up all of the assets and all of the creditors and put those totals on the form for you. But if for whatever reason you need different values, you can easily come to the settings sections to manage that information. By unchecking any of these boxes, you have an option to select from a dropdown the value that you want printed on the form. So if for some reason I needed to print 1599 creditors, if I needed to select a different value, and a different amount for the liabilities. I can easily do that from these drop downs. This is more typically used when you're filing a bare bones case and you haven't had the opportunity to input all of the property and creditors into the case yet. So in this particular instance, we're gonna go ahead and cancel out those options. All right, and the last thing I wanna do is let's go ahead and review that form once again. So let's go ahead and click view voluntary petition at the top right. And here we are. We're going to run down our form briefly to be sure that everything we have inputted is exactly where we expect it to be. All right, excellent. Very nice. Okay. And our form looks complete. And that concludes the steps to generating the voluntary petition or Form 101. And like always, we invite you to view any of our other Jubilee tutorials. Thank you so much for joining us and have yourself a wonderful day.